Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and at the end of this video, I am going to play you a clip of uh, an interview that I got with Tim Draper, billionaire Tim Draper, who is the major Bitcoin maxi, and I'm going to ask him the question that we all want to know the answer to. You're not going to want to miss this, okay? Um, now, I put out a, a short clip of the inter uh, interview on Twitter, but what I'm going to play for you at the end of this, I may play that short clip and then play you the extended clip as well. Um, it's never going to hurt you to hear again what you're going to hear <laughs> multiple times because you need to hear it. And you need to be extremely enthusiastic about not just digital assets, but the the um, the picks and shovels and the digital assets themselves, because I just got out of the link to conference um, and I listened. I heard plenty and I heard enough. It's coming, folks. It is coming. There's no question it's coming. OK, the first thing I wanted to show you in this video is the White House. Um, they are doing that. They are doing this is Israel and Middle East peace deal. And I think this is extremely significant what we're watching here. They're calling it the Abraham Accords signing ceremony. I believe that this is a monster deal. And apparently Gator Trader thinks so too. This UAE Accord today has been kept very secret. In my opinion, we're moving off the petrodollar to a neutral third party settlement currency, probably crypto based. I'm telling you what, folks, there's a lot of things happening right now. Pay attention. Um, okay, Barry Silbert was retweeting. You remember this morning we talked about Jim Cramer and how Jim Cramer was um, uh, was on Anthony Pompliano's show, and he did the interview, and he was saying that he's now uh, going to invest in Bitcoin, and he's going to um, he's going to uh, because he thinks his children will be more comfortable with that. I believe this is all timed, folks. I've thought for a long, here's, let me tell you a few things I've thought for a long time. One thing that I've thought and I've noticed, I believe that Anthony Pompliano was backed by a lot of the major Bitcoin holders, the wealthy people. I believe that he has been positioned to get all of the big time interviews. I believe he's been positioned from the very beginning. I believe that they, I believe the powers that be on the Bitcoin side of things saw him as a young man who was the perfect messenger that they could help to sculpt the whole narrative about Bitcoin going forward. I believe that's why he's got, now look, this, I can't prove this. I'm just telling you, this is what I, piecing all this together, this is what I believe. I also believe that Jim Cramer didn't just all of a sudden out of nowhere decide to go on Anthony Pompliano's show. I think that it is, um, I think that it's time. That's what I think, because I'm going to show you some things Jim Cramer has said in the in the past here in a second. And I think you'll see that it's just time because what he said, this this acting like he knows nothing about it now and that all of a sudden Anthony Pompliano is selling him on this idea and he's just figuring it out. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a minute. Um, this guy, Jim Cramer, is not a dummy. He's not just figuring out what Bitcoin is, not just figuring all this out. No way, no how. Barry Silbert tweets it out gradually, then suddenly, because Jim Cramer tweet tweeted, still thinking Bitcoin. And then Tyler Winklevoss, another Wall Street legend, Jim Cramer is long Bitcoin. Jim, Paul Tudor Jones, and so many other seasoned investors have figured out that it's your best protection against inflation. Booyah. And Jim Cramer tweeted this out. Tyler Winklevoss. Thank you, Tyler. Yes. Buying for my kids for safekeeping in trust. We are neighbors. Just look across the canal. That's us. Well, here's what Jim Cramer said back in 2017. Well, I had Sarah Fryer on. It's the unbelievable CFO of Square. And she downplayed it. 
And no sooner did she downplay it than Dorsey said, look, our customers want it. We're going to give it to them, whatever they want. And, you know, this has become one of those things. It's kind of monopoly money. It's like we can talk about it. I mean, obviously, there's people who use it. Uh, if you ever say anything bad about it, there's like this Bitcoin mafia that comes after you. But it, it is a, it, it is an oddity that is not anything to do. I've decided it's nothing to do with us. I right. mean, it might as well be, you know, the line that you play that you're playing at against New England or the Saints tomorrow. Because it is so little, it's just pure gambling at this point. You know, I mean, uh, there's there's no it's just gambling. I mean, you want to gamble? Go to Vegas. Vegas is fabulous. Maybe we get Jersey sports betting. I'm not allowed to bet my because uh, my contract. But holy cow, this thing's just a gambling thing. The uh, the Tazarians and the Iomegans and the Prestekians and the the black yes. the Blackberries. But they you. were there were only a few of them. I mean, I I, I would be afraid. Okay, there's one clip. Now th then this next clip. But before I play the, the final clip that I wanted to show you from him, I want to I want to tell you what I think just happened. I think that Anthony Pompliano has been carrying this baton. I believe he just handed the baton to Jim Cramer to sell all of this to the traditional investors. I believe that's what we just watched. Okay, I believe it's time. Watch this clip. This is Jim Cramer back in 2014. Listen to what he says. Here's some of that. Big fan of your work. Hi, how are you? I bought your book on Nook three days ago, oh, so okay. they said I. I'm All right. What do you your think name about? Is my name is Matt. What do you think about Bitcoin? You think it's a good investment? No, no, I don't. Okay. I, I think that the government's going to get smart and outlawed. Okay. So okay. you have to be very careful. Oh, really? When, do you, when do you think that's going to be? No, no, but they're going to get wise. Believe me. Okay. 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 Do you have any opinion on Bitcoin? Do you think it's a good investment? Oh God, no. I no? actually. So. So the government's going to shut it down was his stance back in 2014. He may not have known anything about what all this was at that point. But now he's a total believer. This guy and, um, tweeted this. I can't stop thinking about Jim Cramer's analogy of gold as a typewriter to his kids on Anthony Pompliano. So I wrote about it. I'm not going to go into that blog, but I thought that was an interesting um, tweet. And then this guy comes out today, Michael Saylor. On September 14th, 2020, MicroStrategy completed its acquisition of 16,796 additional Bitcoins at an aggregate purchase price of $175 million. To date, we have purchased a total of 38,250 Bitcoins at an aggregate purchase price of $425 million, inclusive of fees and expenses. And then we got this from Chinu Patel, sent me this, Barry Silbert um, replies to that. Um, apparently, there is some kind of Bitcoin buying race between MicroStrategy and Grayscale. <laughs> so he's, he's basically saying Grayscale is buying a lot of it too. So we're kind of competing now. Think about, think about that for a minute, folks. We're just getting started. That's just two companies right there that are buying massive amounts. You might want to own at least one Bitcoin. It's probably not going to hurt you. Then Sean Michael sent me this. Binance.us is now live in Georgia. Georgians can start registering and trading today. That is where I, the digital asset investor, live. So I will be opening a Binance.us account. You better believe it. At the same time, we get this breaking. Crypto exchange Binance is being sued in a U.S. court by Japanese crypto exchange Fisco for alleged, uh, allegedly facilitating the laundering of more than $9 million of stolen cryptocurrency. Then there was this from Michael at VAL5 links. Among them are a general set of guidelines involving exchanges and jurisdictions with weaker regulations where Binance is seemingly singled out for often moving to avoid stronger regulatory oversight. So Binance is being targeted. It makes you wonder if some of the big boys are about to get in and Binance needs to be pushed aside. <laughs> it makes you wonder. Um, coin, then coin, I mean, things are happening so fast right now. It's really crazy. Coindesk, regulators in 48 U.S. states are to unveil a consolidated regulatory framework that will make compliance for cryptocurrency companies far simpler. And here's the article. Uh, bank regulators in 48 states are to unveil consolidated regulatory framework that will make compliance for cryptocurrency companies similar. Now, there's a clip part of that I want to show you, but someone tweeted this out. I wanted to give them credit because this is where I saw it. This is a part of that article from Oro. Um, look at this. 
This will streamline compliance, making it easy for MSBs, companies like Coinbase and Ripple, to work across multiple states instead of going through the time and expense of getting regulated in each and every one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They actually mentioned how this is going to help Ripple and Coinbase. All right. So then we got, then we got this. Remember, Ron Hammond was the guy that was working in Washington, D.C. He was working uh, on the Token Taxonomy Act. He then leaves Washington, D.C. and goes to work at where? Ripple. And he tweeted this after that article came out today. When we added the state preemption clause in the 2019 version of the Token Taxonomy Act, I got a decent amount of flack from CSBS. The provision was designed to preempt the states with more onerous regulations, which are more than likely from the two states not part of this effort. And he goes on down here. The clause also was aimed at streamlining the current vast variety in state-by-state -state regulations. Fast forward to today, this is a good step in the right direction, and it is encouraging to see pressure from Congress and Brian Brooks at the OCC, previously at Coinbase, result in action from CSBS. Okay, and now um, this was something I talked to you about this morning, remember? This person says this has always been the plan. Universal basic income gained support during the pandemic. Universal basic income. You might want to remember that term as we go forward. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I was in the uh, link to um, conference. Okay. I was in the link to uh, conference uh, this morning and I was able to, I, I was able to, to ask a question. I didn't get a, like a full interview. But I was able to ask a question to um, uh, Greg Kidd was in there. But I didn't ask him a question. Tim Draper, I got to ask a question. You're going to see the answer to that and the extended version in in a few seconds here. Um, and I got to ask JP Tirrett from Uphold a question as well. And I also got to ask um, a guy that used to be at Ripple, who's uh, he was previously at, at BlackRock, then went to Ripple. Got to ask him a question too. His name's VJ. I'm drawing a blank on his last name, but I'll try to pull that clip as well. But I want to make sure everybody listening to me, if you haven't done it yet, you got to go download the app from the Apple Store or from uh, the Google Play Store, the Link to app. It's L I N Q T O, and you can go to L I N Q T O dot com because these guys in this conference, the this stuff is selling. You'll see here. These, th this stuff is selling today. They're out of Coinbase. Um, but these three are selling today like crazy because they're doing that conference and all these investors are learning about why they need to be investing in the picks and shovels as well as digital assets themselves. And so, and, and for those of you that haven't been seeing this, this, and these, they're running, they keep running out of, uh, they keep selling out of Ripple and they added to it. And they, they sold out earlier of Uphold and uh, Link to as well. But all of these are selling because people see what's coming now. If you haven't done it yet and you're, you're you have to be an accredited investor. So some of you may not be able to um, may not be able to buy it. But any of you who, who are accredited investors, we're 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 in a small, tiny window of opportunity right now. And you better, if you're able to, you better take advantage of it before it's too late because I believe that the window is open and then it's going to be closed. And that's my takeaway from talking to some of these people like Tim Draper. You can sense it in their enthusiasm and the way they speak. You can, you can sense that things are imminent. Now, the other thing Tim Draper talks about that I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to show you in a second is he brings up, he brought up unstoppable domains. Now this, this and the link to, they're both in the description of all my videos. If you haven't gotten any unstoppable domains, you need to, I'm going to, I'll play some of the clips from Tim Draper also in, in later videos of what he says about unstoppable domains. But this also, these are tremendous opportunities where the window is closing, but I talked to him, I told him briefly something about unstoppable domains and how I'd been talking about it and I was excited about it. But anyway, so go in the description of my video, go to uh, link to and sign up and also go to unstoppable domains and sign up if you haven't gotten any. I've been buying domains and I talk in the, in the, um, in the clip with, um, with Tim Draper, you'll see one of the domain names that I bought that I told him about. 
Okay, now here's the clip. This is where I just simply asked him, and then I'm going to have the ex I'm going to play the extended one after this, which will also include this 38 seconds. Okay, so this is Tim Draper when I asked him a question. But I've heard you talk about Bitcoin a thousand times, but I have to ask you, are you an owner in Ripple or XRP or both? Um, well, Ripple is XR XRP is the Ripple uh, currency. Yes, I'm an owner of Ripple or XRP. I'm an owner of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Tezos. I'm an owner of awesome. uh, Aragon. I'm a believer. I think this is it, it's happening. It's coming. Um, it, it's it's so important for the world, and I want the world to know it, and I want other people in the world to get on board. But I've heard you. I love that guy's enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Now, um, next, um, but before I play. Before I play the, the extended clip, I wanted to tell you, I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and spread this video around and tell your friends and family that I got the sound clip from Tim Draper. I've been wondering the answer to these questions for, for almost three years now, this question in particular. Thank you for listening, and here's the clip. If you've got a message you want the world to see, um, we get free speech again. Uh, you know, we're starting to lose it, but we're going to get it around the world now. Uh, so that's very exciting. I think it's a great time for, for this because I've noticed um, a lot of people putting a muzzle on other people if they want to say something. Um, and and we're, we're losing that free speech. We need, we can't have the muzzle. We have to have the debate. And then we're all better off. We all benefit from knowing each other's point of view and all that sort of thing. Rumis, thank you so much for your, uh, can I ask one, uh, DAI, one final question, a uh, short answer. Yes, Tim, Tim, big fan. The world needs more people with your enthusiasm. Let me tell you that. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, Good, well. Yeah. I was going to ask you a question, but first I want to tell you something. I'm a big Unstoppable Domains fan, and I happen to own YaleFootball.crypto, where Greg went to school. <laughs> oh, my father <laughs> is jealous. My father was so jealous. He played on the Yale football team. Really? Well, let him know. <laughs> hey, it's everything's for sale, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, but, but I've heard you talk about Bitcoin a thousand times, but I have to ask you, are you an owner in Ripple or XRP or both? Um, well, Ripple is XR, XRP is the Ripple uh, currency. Yes, I'm an owner of Ripple or XRP. I'm an owner of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Tezos. I'm an owner of awesome. uh, Aragon. I'm a believer. I think this is it, it's happening. It's coming. Um, it, it's it's so important for the world, and I want the world to know it, and I want other people in the world to get on board. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, and embarrassed by their friends, family, and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors, the information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free Digital Asset Investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.